Okay, so new Woody Allen film. And there's always this thing with Woody Allen, you know, is it one of the good ones, one of the bad ones? Is it a return to form? Is it a fall from form? And the last couple of films, Irrational Man, I wasn't fond of at all. Um, Magic in the Moonlight I thought was kind of okay. This is at a sort of higher level than that. It's uh, set in old Hollywood and vintage New York, 1930s uh, tale. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg is the sort of the Woody Allen standard. Do you remember when... When uh, Bullets Over Broadway came out and you went to see it and you said afterwards, John Cusack is basically playing Woody Allen in mm-hmm. that film. Remember that? Okay, fine. Well, <laughs> Jesse Good Eisenberg. Film. Yes, and Jesse Eisenberg is playing Woody Allen even more than uh, John Cusack was. So he is the sort of slightly dorky guy from uh, the East Coast who goes out to the West to get a job with his uncle Phil, uh, played by Steve Carell, who is this uh, Hollywood big shot. And whilst he's out there, he needs to be shown around. He's that classic, you know, Woody Allen character out of place in LA he says yes it, you know it's sunny but I don't know my way around you know what's what, what, what is there to love so he is told that uh, this assistant is going to take him around played by uh, Kristen Stewart next thing you know he becomes completely infatuated by her of course and moves to kiss her here's a clip uh, I don't think that's a very good idea actually no I'm seeing someone oh what, what's he like Doug is a journalist. Oh. I just thought since you had so much free time on your hands. He travels a lot. And I really like spending my time with you. I hope that's okay. You know, you're very sweet. Have you heard that before? You have this deer in the headlights quality. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Well, if I was your boyfriend, I would not travel. Or if I did, I would take you with me. I hope he knows how to kiss you and all the rest. It's between us. So they go to see Barbara Stanwyck pictures. They have, you know, this sort of uh, putative uh, romance. But it turns out, of course, you know, she has a boyfriend, and uh, the boyfriend, it, it turns out to be a married man. And one thing leads to another. In the end, uh, the story divides itself between the East Coast and the West Coast. And uh, there are two women involved in it, both of whom are conveniently called Veronica, the other one played by uh, Blake Lively, who comes to embody what his aspirations are in a much more sort of material way. So the interesting thing about the film is that it, it, in many ways, it, as you know, Woody Allen films often do, it revisits themes with which we're kind of familiar. I mean, there are some scenes in it that could have been taken in terms of their script directly out of uh, Annie Hall. The discussions about, you know, what's wrong with L.A. is very much like that. You know, why would I want to move anywhere with the only cultural advantage is that you can turn right on a stop sign? There is one sequence in which he's trying to persuade somebody to leave California to come back to New York. And he's talking about Greenwich Village. And it, I mean, it, it, that is absolutely an Annie Hall outtake. There are hints of crimes and misdemeanors in this underlying subplot about his gangster brother and, you know, the morality of crime. There's all those sort of the the lines that you would expect, like the unexamined life is worth living, but the examined life is no bargain. Actually, what makes it work is firstly, it looks beautiful. Vittorio Storaro shot it and finds unexpected beauty, particularly in in, in the California locations, which of course is something that which traditionally you think of Alan only really finding that beauty in the Manhattan locations. The, the the club interiors in which we are just sort of swathed with this art deco uh, designs are, you know, lush. It's a very, very visually sumptuous and rich film, and it is a treat to look at. There are certain things in it which are clunky. Uh, Alan's narration, I thought, dragged rather and... Although, you know, that thing about doing a narration is something which we're very familiar with, with Woody Allen, because it did here feel like uh, it was heavy on the narration and I could have lived without that. Um, but it it passed the time perfectly well. I did enjoy... It's got to do better than that. No, 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 no. Just pass the no, no, time. Yeah, but hang on, hang on, let me finish. It passed the time perfectly well, and I enjoyed it as a piece of filmmaking, and I thought visually it was really rich, and Steve Carell gives a very, very good performance. I don't think it's classic Woody Allen, um, but then, you know, when you've made as many movies as he has... The fact of the matter is they're not all going to be Annie Hall. They're not all going to be Manhattan. Um, it's So it's one of the better ones. It's one of the better later period ones. And, I mean, it's not Blue Jasmine, um, but neither is it, neither is it Irrational Man.